We now want to describe the algorithm that creates a convex hull for points in 3D with a randomized incremental approach. In the beginning we have to take a small subset of the points and create the convex hull for them in a brute force way. How many points do we need such that we can do that? Well, we want to create a 3D convex hull, so we need at least 4 points, because for 3 it's just a triangle. And in particular we need 4 points that are non-coplanar, so they don't lie on a common plane. For example these 4. And then we create the convex hull for them, that we can just do brute force however we want, since it's only 4 points, there are only a constant number of many possibilities. And now we take the other points in randomized order. And we have a randomized permutation p5 to pn of all the points that are not a p'. prime. And in every step we want to take one of these points and process it. First we want to create the conflict graph. So we have an edge in the conflict graph if and only if a face is visible from the point, as we defined in the previous part. So here we have an edge from 6 to this face, from 7 to this and the bottom face, 9 the front in front and the bottom and 8 the one in the back here. So let's pick the next point. This point could already lie in the convex hull. If it does, like number 5 here, then we don't even have to do anything because the convex hull doesn't change. And to figure out if a point lies in the convex hull we can look at the conflict graph. If the conflict, number of conflicts of this point is zero, it doesn't see any face, then it's inside the convex hull and we're done. So now we can assume we have a point, for example point 6 here, where there's at least one conflict. Now what do we want to do? We know that we have to destroy all the faces that we have a conflict with, all the faces that this point sees, and we have to create the new faces with the horizon. So first we delete all the faces in the conflict graph from the convex hull. So this one disappears. The face is still in the conflict graph. So these two points still have a conflict with the face that doesn't exist anymore, but we still need these edges in the next few steps. So now we want to look at the horizon edges that are on the visibility of this point. To get these horizon edges we can just walk through all the faces in the conflict graph and there have to be on the boundary of those faces. So just walking through all those faces we can construct the horizon again, which doesn't take longer than looking at the faces themselves. Now for every edge here on the horizon we have to create a new triangle with our point PR. So we have to create a new face and then update the data structures. Or well, let's pick one edge, for example this one here, and we create a new face F with our point PR by the edge E and the point PR. And in the conflict graph we also create a vertex for this face. Now we have a new face in the convex hull and we have to update the conflict, so we have to figure out what are the new conflicts of this face. For that look at the edge E again. There were two faces before adjacent to E, which was the one at the back F1 and the one that we just deleted F2. One of them is always one that we deleted and the other one is one that is still there. Now whatever point sees the new face F also had to see one of those two before. So we look at the conflicts of these two faces in the conflict graph. Those are the candidates, those are the possible points that have a conflict with the new face now. If a point doesn't see either of these two, then it has to lie there somewhere completely else, so it also cannot see F. Now for each point in this conflict graph, for example number 8, which has a conflict with face F1, we have to check, does it see the face F? If it does, then we have to add a conflict. So we add an edge here from point 8 to the new face. And that's all we do. Then we look at the other two edges, for each of them we create a triangle with number 6, 
and we update the conflict graph. And when we get here, we have to add an edge from 7 to this new face. And then we have our new convex hull. We have updated the conflicts. We have added the new faces to the conflict graph. And now we still have to remove this point from the conflict graph because it's not unprocessed anymore. And we have to remove all the faces that we deleted. So we remove the vertex PR and the conflict faces of it, which in this case was only this face, so these two edges we also remove. And then we are done with one iteration, we can continue with the next one and keep on constructing the convex hull incrementally with the aid of the conflict graph. What is the running time of this algorithm? Well, let's have a look. We have a for loop here that goes through n vertices, we have a for each loop here for all the horizon edges that can also be a linear number of edges. And then we have a for each loop here that goes through all the conflicts of this edge. So this means that we have order of n to the 3 worst case running time. This is pretty bad. n to the 3 is nothing we ever really want. But you can probably guess that in the expected case this is much better. So the randomization helps us. And in the next part we want to analyze what's the expected running time.